Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. So, the Most High would like me to tell you that judgments have gone out on bribery and extortion. And to read the meaning of extortion to you, um, modern day, it's called blackmail, right? People, like, And you know what bribery is. So, extortion. The practice of obtaining something, especially money, through force or threats. He used bribery and extortion to build himself a huge and art stuff mansion. Extaction. Extraction. Blackmail. So what people call blackmailing. A shakedown. So there's judgments gone out. And he wants me to read it to you from his word. And God is against bribery, extortion, and blackmail. Alright? Amos 5 and 12. For I know your manifold transgressions. And your mighty sins, they afflict the just, they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. So people who take bribes, they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. They turn away, they take in a, they take bribes against the innocent. Okay? And justice and judgment is not being served because of their bribes and because of extortion and because of blackmail. So... Matthew twenty three twenty five, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. So you got people who are hypocrites. They play like they're good, you know, on the outside, the outside of the cup, but inside they're full of extortion and excess. They extort people, they blackmail people, and they take bribes against the innocent. They just, they'll do anything for money, right? Or for material gain. Job 15 and 34. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate. So people who extort, take bribes, and blackmail, they're going to be desolate. And fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. So their houses of bribery, their tabernacles of bribery, fire shall consume it. Ezekiel 22 and 12. In thee have they taken gifts to shed blood. Thou hast taken usury and increase, and thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion, and hast forgotten me, says the Lord God. Isaiah 33 and 15. He that walks righteously and speaks uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppression, that shakes his hand from holding of bribes, that stops his ear from hearing of blood and shuts his eye from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. So you need to walk upright, righteously, speak uprightly, despise, hate the gain of oppression, and shake not your... Your hand shouldn't be shaken to hold of bribes. And you stop your ear from hearing of blood and shuts your eyes from seeing evil. You get away from those things. Now, Proverbs 10 and 2. Treasures of wickedness, because bribery, extortion, blackmail, those type of treasures. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Now, Psalms 37 and 16, a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. And God wants me to read that riches come from him and you're seeking your riches in the wrong way. And to read, a, talk about King Solomon, because King Solomon was one of the richest, the richest man to walk on earth, right? And King Solomon didn't get his riches from evil he got his riches from God and he wants to if he can make the um, King Solomon the rich, richest man to walk earth he can make you rich you don't need to take a bribe to extort or to blackmail or shake down you know in modern times I'm just giving it to you how you'd understand Psalms 37 and 16 a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked Proverbs 22 and 16. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that gives to the rich shall surely come to want. So these people who oppress the poor to increase their riches, they're surely going to come to want.
and they're going to give their riches unto the poor. Give their riches. At, okay, let me read that again. And he that gives to the rich shall surely come to want. So they surely will come to want. Psalms 26 and 9. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hand is mischief and their right hand is full of bribes. So sinners and bloody men, their hands are full of bribes. Of Their hands are full of mischief and their hands are full of bribes. That's what God is telling you. Actions speak louder than words and titles your action does your action prove your title psalms 26 and 11 as for me i will walk in my integrity redeem me and be merciful unto me so what does david say to him keep him from sinners and from bloody men whose hands is mischief and their right hands full of bribes he will walk in his integrity you have integrity if you don't take a bribe you have integrity if you don't extort people you have integrity if you don't blackmail you have integrity. You walk in your integrity. You walk righteously. Job 15 and 34. For the congregation of hypocrites. And you're a hypocrite if you do any of those things. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. Doesn't it say this about the Pharisees? Didn't they offer Job 30 pieces, uh, um, Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray Christ? He took a bribe. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. So you are a hypocrite. That's why I went back up to read hypocrite. That's why in Job it says, For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. Judas took a bribe. The thirty pieces of silver was a bribe. 1 Samuel 12 and 3 Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord, and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? He's saying he never took no one's ox. Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or whom, or of whom, or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith? When you take a bribe, it blinds your eyes, and I will restore it to you. So Samuel was saying he's never stole nobody's ox. He's not stole nobody's ass. He's not defrauded nobody. He's not oppressing nobody, and he ain't taking no bribes to blind his eyes. 1 Samuel 8 and 3. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. When you take bribes, you pervert judgment. You take away the justice from the innocent when you take bribes. But Samuel's sons took bribes. They did that, but Samuel didn't do that. Proverbs 10 and 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Proverbs 8 and 18. Riches and honor are with me, yeah? Durable riches and righteousness. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. What does God tell you? Riches and honor are with him. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. And by him, kings reign. So he's the one who makes you a king. And princes decree justice. By me, princes rule. By him, he makes you a ruler. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. Now, one king's... 10 and 23 so king solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom why king solomon got his riches from god king solomon got his wisdom from god that is why he exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom so there's no bribe bigger than the riches that god could give you from you doing righteously but before you get riches he'll give you wisdom and understanding 
Did he not give Solomon wisdom? Solomon, when he prayed to God, he asked him for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And then God blessed him with riches because he asked for a righteous thing. He needed he needed the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so he can so he can judge God's people. God loves judgment. And he got the he got the riches because he asked for wisdom. He got the wisdom before the riches. You understand? Now, Psalms 104 and 24. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. Do you see why Solomon got blessed with riches? Because he asked for wisdom. God told you to ask for wisdom. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. The earth is full of God's riches. You don't need to do those things. Psalms 119 verse 14. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. Proverbs 22 and 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So that is another way you can get riches from God. By your humility and your fear of God. It'll give you riches, honor, and life. And by what? By your wisdom. And he told you to seek, get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. And he told you if you don't have wisdom to ask him for it. Proverbs 24 and 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all pre pre precious and pleasant riches, knowledge, wisdom, understanding what so King Solomon asked God for. 1 Chronicles 29 and 12. Both riches and honors come of thee. Where do both riches and honor come, of, come from? They come from God. And thou reigns over all. And in thy hand is power and might. And in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to give strength unto all so god gives strength unto all he makes everybody great that's why you shouldn't be competing with anybody or jealous or envious of anyone because it's god who makes you great it's god who gives you strength it's god who gives you knowledge wisdom understanding it's god who gives you power it's god who gives you riches these things come from god it's god who gives you life and it's god who gives you honor these things you shouldn't be competing with anybody for. It's even God who gives you good success. 2 Chronicles 9 and 22. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. But where did he get it from? He got it from God. Psalms 112 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord that delights greatly in his commandments his seed shall be mighty upon the earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever why because they fear the lord blessed is the man that fears the lord what even comes with the fear of the lord wealth and riches and if you take bribes and you extort people and you blackmail, you should repent. That is not the way you should be getting your riches and your wealth. Because that comes from God. Get wisdom. Or get the fear, have the fear of the Lord. If you had the fear of the Lord, you wouldn't do that. And God would bless you with these things. Everybody, Everything has a time and a season. It's your season. Sometimes you're in the season of learning. To gain the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that you require before God blesses you with the riches. Were you like Solomon? Did you ask for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding first? Or did you seek the riches and the wealth and the fame and the glory first? Those things come from God. And as you can see, Solomon got those things from God. And he surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom a lot of you people ask things from God but you don't know what you're asking for because you don't have the wisdom and understanding for the thing that you're asking
and you need to, you're in the learning season and once you pass your learning season then it's the rewards stay blessed i hope this opened up your knowledge with some understanding and you could take this up with god so yeah he's judging extortion bribery and blackmail like what modern days you guys call it blackmail right but it's extortion and bribery stay blessed